Hi, my name is Cody Reich. I'm with the Automotive Restoration Club and I want to take a few minutes and show you how I restore stainless trim. This happens to be a piece of stainless from a 1970 Dodge Challenger and as you can see we've got uh, a fairly old piece of trim that's actually in pretty rough shape. We've got a ding right there which we'll actually take out and then I'll polish this area up. Before I get started I just want to show you some of the things that you'll need. Uh, to make this process a lot easier. There are some that you can get by without having, but most of it, uh, if you have it, will make it a lot easier. Uh, first off, I'm wearing safety glasses so that I can talk. Uh, it's better to wear a shield if you're going to do any buffing just because it protects everything. Uh, using a buffer can definitely be a little bit dangerous. Um, the first thing that you'll want to have for your buffing wheel is probably a sisal or sisal wheel, which is basically a rope wheel. Uh, and if you look real close, you can see it just looks like a bunch of tightly wound rope. And this is a very aggressive wheel. The second wheel that you'll want to have is a spiral bound uh, buffing wheel. This one has very tight spirals that are uh, sewn in to make it a little more firm, but it's still a fairly soft wheel. You use this with a cutting buffing, a cutting compound, and it will uh, buff out real good. This is a, a loose wheel. This is for your final uh, finish when you're going to do a final uh, polish on your trim. You'll also need some files if you have some really good sized dents. You'll want a good set of files and you'll want a trim hammer and dolly. Uh, you'll also need some sandpaper. Uh, I use 150, 240, 320. Uh, sometimes I'll use 400 or I'll go right to 600. Um, they do sell it at local auto body shops uh, with sticky back and uh, you can actually just peel off what you need. I also use 800 and then I use a thousand on a disc with a sticky back on a DA and then also a 1200 and 1500 and I do all that before I go to the buffing wheel but let's get started here real quick um, so first thing I want to do is clean this area off so I use some lacquer thinner you can use almost anything as long as it'll clean the area uh, stainless is pretty much uh, pretty durable and will withstand a lot of chemicals uh, but but by having a clean area to start with, you'll be able to see what you're doing. You'll also not gum up any of your sandpapers. This one had some adhesive tar or something on it. Uh, it's been around a long time. And we'll also still now be able to see our dent a little easier. I don't know if that's showing up through there. but uh, So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this area up for right now. I'm going to move this because it's flammable and I don't want it here anymore. So. Now that that's out of the way, what I'm going to do is I've isolated where my dent is and if you flip it over it's really really easy to see on the back side. Uh, you can see that dent right there at the tip of my fingertips. So I'm going to go ahead and place it on the dolly. Now with this situation on the, on the uh, hammer here, I want to try to hammer so I'm hammering basically flush to the dolly and the hammer and I'm just going to squish. I'm basically squishing the stainless between it and flattening it out. So it doesn't it doesn't take really hard blows. Uh, start soft, and if it's not working out, you can go ahead and add some a little bit more power. I'm also rolling the trim so that it, this is kind of a, a rolled face here, and uh, I can see I pretty much have. Uh, gotten it maybe even a little too far you can uh, tap it where you need it to be so I think that's pretty good so I've gotten the, the basically the dent out now I want to take a file and take that area and if you look really closely as I file you'll see that the area will start to file flat and you can see the high and low spots all evening out. So based on this, I can see that I bumped it a little too much, so I've got a little bit of a high spot. So I'm going to bring that high spot down just by filing. And you can see it start to turn silver evenly throughout the whole area. So if I go the other way, I can see it a little easier too. And I kind of want to fan this out. I don't want just one divot. So I'm working the uh, 
the area. I've almost got it. So now if you can see that area has been sanded pretty much smooth. There's no evidence of a dent at all there. Um, pretty much flat. So at this point I'll go to the 150 paper. Uh, and I, I do want to, as I'm getting this ready here, I do want to remind you when you're working on trim, um, when you're doing your project, it's exciting to be at this point in your project because uh, you're obviously working on some one of the, the final steps, so it's it's pretty exciting time. But if you can remember, take this over to your project before it's painted. Make sure that it's all straight where you want it. You can bend it, you can twist it, you can modify uh, your, your project a little bit, but to get a really good finish when you're all done, test fit it before you start working on it and polishing it, and that will definitely help out too. So. Now that you've got it filed down, take your 150 and just in one direction, you're just filing out, sanding out all the file marks. So this is, stainless is pretty hard. Stainless is a very tough metal, so uh, if you want to switch spots in your paper quite often because it's going to dull it pretty fast. So I don't know if you can see that they're starting to come out pretty quick though. Okay, so now I've got all the filing marks down. It's very, really, really smooth. And I've only basically hit the area that, uh, with the 150 where I filed. So now I'm going to go to 240. At this point, again, I want to feather a little further out um, so that I can continue to make sure that I got all those scratches removed. But I'm not going to any other area yet except for where I've repaired with the hammer and dolly and file. So. You want to continue to make sure you get all the scratches from the 150 out. And this process isn't necessary if you don't have a dent. This is only if you're going to be repairing dents. Or very, very, very deep scratches. Okay, so that's the 240. At this point, I'm going to go to 320. 